This was my first smart cube, but unfortunately, it's not so smart anymore. When I plug it into charge, the light just starts flashing randomly, and when I try and connect it over Bluetooth, it always disconnects immediately. But even though this was never my favorite smart cube, there was one little underappreciated feature that I always loved about it. You can see it struggling to do it right now, that is the light up internals. Now yeah, pretty much all smart cubes have an indicator light of some sort, but this one with its transparent plastic all around feels like it was designed to be a light up Rubik's cube. And aside from just looking cool, it was also surprisingly practical. There was a button you could push in the app to just leave the lights on permanently, which was super nice if you just want to solve a cube in a dark room or even outside at night. I've actually tried making my own light up Rubik's cube before inside this transparent force cube. It involved putting a separate battery and LED in all 12 edge pieces, which looked very cool, but was also very very impractical, taking about 10 minutes to turn on or off. The problem with doing that in a normal Rubik's Cube, even one with nice transparent plastic like this, is there's just not enough room down in the core for one centralized lighting system with one simple on and off switch. But maybe you see where I'm going with this, because a smart cube is specifically designed to solve that problem. The pieces are as low profile as possible, making room for a massive core where you can fit all the electronics that you'd like. So, now that the original electronics are no longer working, I realized that this would be the perfect way to make the world's most incredible light up Rubik's Cube. That's right, today we're going to be bringing this legendary smart cube back to life by completely gutting it out and replacing the internals with my own custom electronics. Let's get started. So right here we have the core where all of the electronics live. And if we go ahead and pop off all these center caps, which is excruciatingly difficult by the way, but you can now see there's a little circuit board underneath each one with sensors mounted on it, which detect the movement of these center pieces, which is how it knows how you're turning the cube. Unfortunately, the way the core is designed in two big pieces means that you actually have to remove all four of these center pieces before you're able to access the inside. And unfortunately, these circuit boards are not meant to be removed. Even if you did carefully desolder all the electrical connections, it does seem to be mounted very permanently in the plastic there. So instead, I think we're gonna have to take the brute force approach. On second thought, that was actually easier and much less destructive than I was expecting. And now much like a GAN cube, it looks like we can push down and rotate 90 degrees to remove the locking plastic piece. And then, after some combination of twisting this around, get the entire center piece off. Now finally seeing the inside of this piece is super cool because it confirms my suspicions about how a smart cube works. Underneath this circuit board, we have two Hall effect sensors, which essentially can detect a change in magnetic field. Those are mounted right on top of this magnetic ring, but it's not like a normal magnet that you find in a Rubik's Cube, with north on one side and south on the other side. Instead, we actually have north on one half of the ring, so this half right here, and then south on the other half of the ring, like that. And so, every time you turn the cube by 90 degrees, one of these two sensors will change either from south to north, or from north to south, which the cube can use to figure out exactly how you turned it. And all of that sensor data is being fed down into the brain of the cube using this little tiny ribbon cable running down the center stock. Cool, right? Now that I'm done nerding out about that, let's remove the rest of the center pieces, and then we can use these two screws to finally get a look inside of the core. Okay, are you ready for this? I don't know what I'm expecting to see, but I am pretty excited. Oh wow, that's less packed full than I thought it would be. So we have a very nice little circuit board with all those ribbon cables coming off of it. You can see the four LEDs around the outside which light the cube up, and I expect there to be a huge battery underneath. Yep, there we go. So I'll put that aside to have fun looking at later, but for now, it's time for me to start reinventing the wheel and seeing what kind of electronics I can pack into this thing. I have actually already picked out some parts. I have some RGB LEDs, which should be a lot brighter and more exciting than the ones that came in here. I have this little tiny Bluetooth microcontroller that I can program to control the lights remotely. And of course, my own rechargeable battery to power it all. So now it's time for me to do some design work and see if I can't fit all these parts into here and get it working. It might not make for a great time lapse, but I'll do my best and I'll see you after many hours have passed. All right, after many weeks of soldering and programming and realizing I'm missing some parts, buying those, resoldering, breaking everything, buying more parts, resoldering, doing some more programming, soldering for the 10th time, this cube is finally ready to be assembled. Now I just wanna give you a quick little overview of everything inside because we're about to close it up and hopefully never have to open it again. The brain of the cube is this little USB-C microcontroller which is connected to everything else. I've written a little program for it that takes commands over Bluetooth and uses that to control the color and patterns of the lights. Now you can see the actual 
actual LEDs themselves are actually hot glued to the inside of the plastic core, which is just transparent enough that you can see them light up from the other side. There's eight of them, all attached in one big strand of wires, which actually lets us control them all individually. Also attached to the central microcontroller is this little rechargeable battery. This cube won't have a whole lot of battery life while the lights are on, maybe an hour or so if we're lucky. But that's why I have this other little chip soldered on right here, connected with a couple of wires all the way down into the centerpiece, connecting to the electrical contacts that were actually included on the original cube. This will allow us to charge our new light up smart cube using the original USB charger, which I think is really cool. And finally, the one last component is this little black cylinder. This is actually a vibration sensor, which will allow us to conserve our battery life. So if we set the cube down and we're not using it for a while, we can detect that and just turn the lights off. But then as soon as we pick the cube back up again, it'll turn everything back on as if nothing happened. So that'll allow the battery to last quite a bit longer. Anyway, the one last challenge we have now is actually squeezing all these components together to assemble the core. I've tried it before and it is a very tight fit. It takes like 10 minutes of getting all the wires in exactly the right spot. So hopefully that works out okay. As you can see, I've also cut a little hole for the USB-C port in case I need to reprogram it in the future. And then it should be smooth sailing from there to get the rest of these pieces on here. So let's go ahead and start the assembly. All right, the cube has been assembled and the lights have been dimmed to show off what this would look like in a normally lit room. So let's pick it up and pretty immediately the lights turn on. So when you first turn it on, it lights up pure white, big deal. But the cool thing is we have not just one, but eight individual LEDs and they're all RGB so we can do whatever we want with them. So I designed this really simple app for my phone. It's really just a dummy web page, but basically I can hit connect cube right here. We can select the RGB cube and pair it. And now if we want to set the whole cube to a single color, we can hit this color picker right here, choose any of these predefined colors or just any color that we want. So for example, how about darkish blue right here? Set that and there we go, the cube is that color. Likewise, we can choose any of those other colors from the list. So how about bright pink? There we go, the cube is pinked or maybe green. There we go. But wait, it just gets cooler from there. Because each of the LEDs can be controlled individually, we can also use the multiple colors option and choose whatever color we want for each of the eight LEDs. So for example, that one can be red. The next one over can be blue right there. The next one can be a lighter blue right there. I'll make the next one green. So that's right there. The next one, how about pink? There we go. The next one, yellow. This one can just be black. And the last one can be white. So you can make whatever pattern of rainbow colors you want and the cube will just stay that way no matter what you do. But wait, it gets even cooler because we can now enable the snake option. So now all those colors that we just set will start snaking their way around the cube in one big rainbow mess. We can make it a little bit faster. There we go, party mode and all the way up. Oh, that's awesome. And of course we can do snake mode with whatever colors we want. So we could just have a single one lit up and then enable snake mode. And there we go, it's moving its way around the cube. We could have, let's say red, white, and blue like this and then have police lights. There we go. Now, if only we could make this happen automatically every time you twist a corner or something. And finally, the last major mode is rainbow mode, which is pretty self-explanatory, just pulsing different RGB colors. We can make it really slow, just very slowly breathing throughout the colors, or again, party mode, super fast. So needless to say, you can get very creative with just these four options. There we go, we have a Christmas mode right here. Make it a little bit faster. Oh yeah, beautiful. And that vibration sensor I mentioned earlier means that if you're using the cube like this, it'll know that you're using it, so it'll keep the lights on. But if you just leave it sitting on a table not moving for one minute, the cube will detect that and then fall asleep. And then as soon as you pick it back up again, it'll go ahead and pick up right where it left off. So overall, I'm super happy with how this turned out. Overall, it's not quite as practical as you might think, mainly because of the battery life. And just as I said that, it has now gone into an unresponsive state where the lights stop moving, it stops responding to Bluetooth, and eventually the lights will dim until it slowly dies. And guess what? That wasn't even the first time this happened while I was filming this little demo. I think the one hour battery life that I quoted earlier was way too optimistic. In my experience, it's more like 10 minutes. But that just goes to show you how impressive all these off the shelf smart cubes are in terms of preserving battery life. I think the original battery in the Go cube is actually smaller than the one I have in here now. And this can last multiple days. And maybe there's also a reason why most smart cubes don't have big flashy RGB lights inside. Those things just suck up a lot of battery life, a lot more than you can reasonably fit inside of a Rubik's cube. But this just makes me extra happy that I went through the extra effort of making this cube chargeable through its original charging adapter and stand. So we can just go ahead and plug this in here. So as you can see, it just reset itself back to full white. So we can go ahead and reconnect to Bluetooth and then get our Christmas lights back going again. There we go. So maybe this thing is best left as a display piece just sitting on the stand forever. But either way, I could not be happier with the results. I think the software came together really nicely to be able to control it seamlessly with your phone and the hardware, well, 
it works. But yeah, that's about it for my handmade Bluetooth controlled RGB smart cube. I really hope you all enjoyed the process of making it. I thought it was really fun because that's pretty much it. And I'll see you guys next time.